Hello, Christian sisters. This is Sister Debbie from Don'tPerish.com. Today I want to share a video with you that I'm going to title Death, Destruction, Healing, and Hope. This one's going to be pretty tough for me to do because we've been having all of those in our household, in our body lately. We just lost a dear brother in Christ. He's left the body and it's like a death. And while this was going on, within the past couple of days, we received phone calls from people in our past that we had dearly loved and been in fellowship with and trying to help in the word. And when they called, it was not for healing and reconstruction of the body and trying to glorify God. It was to cause more destruction. And then to top all that, we got a message from one of our children that we haven't heard from in a long time that Jim's mother has died. Now I want to tell you, sisters, you know, we've been doing this for 10 years, not, not like this for 10 years. We've been growing and ramping up to it. But the past several years that we've been in so much ministry, we've been beaten and battered and people coming at us from all sides. We go out on the streets and mocked and things thrown at and people yelling things, demonic activity. And, you know, we weather those pretty good. But for some reason, this all piled up and it really took me down and it took me down really hard. So what do we do while we're down? We go to the scriptures. So the first one I want to share with you is 2 Corinthians 4. For God, who had commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So Luke 22, 31 and 32 is exactly what we're feeling. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy fail not. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. That's pretty awesome. The body of Christ is so precious. And when there's disagreements, somebody lets in some false theology, differences in doctrine, people falling away a little bit here, a little bit there, personalities, sin, flesh, pride, whatever it might be. The body of Christ needs to press through this for the glory of God and to come together because it causes nothing but destruction. And that's what we're seeing out there all over. And that makes me think of, where am I? Second Timothy 4. This is an encouraging one for me because this really fits in with who Jim and I are, let me see, verses 5 through 8. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. This is what we are working for right here, verse 7. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth, this is our hope right here, sisters. Henceforth, this is a, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So as we go through the trials in life, no matter how hard they are, there is hope. We need to hold on to that hope. We need to press forward through that. We need to buckle down and, and with, withstand that storm that's going on because there is a light on the other side. Our Savior has told us that, and he's there waiting for us. 
And he tells us that in John chapter 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that something for us to cling to like a life rope, to hang on to as we go through all these troubles, looking forward for that blessed hope for the appearing of our Lord and Savior? So we make sure we run to him in our time of trials, as in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we hold on, sisters, there is hope and there's healing. Psalm 147, 3. He healeth the broken in their heart and bindeth up their wounds. Now he'll do that for us. We take a breath and we surrender everything to him. And maybe we got to keep doing that over and over as we go through these troubles. Jim continues to point me through the word, point me to the scriptures, and bring me back to where I'm focusing on the Lord and not what's going on around me. Because although Satan has had a heyday around here with all kinds of things going on, destruction and and death like I was talking about, he's not going to win in the end. And I have to remember that. I have to pick myself up and look through that and know that, you know what, there is hope. There's hope for people out there who have walked away. There's hope for people as long as they're still breathing. There's hope for them. So let us not get carried away in distress over what is going on today because what does our Lord and Savior say about today and worrying about tomorrow? He says in Matthew six thirty four. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And if we would just pay attention to those verses, we would probably save ourselves a lot of trouble and a lot of pain worrying about what's coming up tomorrow when we just need to pretty much worry about what we're going to get through today. And we already know we can get through tomorrow because in 1 John 4, 4, we read this. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And how do we know that? Because here's my go-to verse, John sixteen thirty three. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We have to remember that, sisters, as we go through these troubles and these trials. And quite frankly, as I'm sitting here, I'm having trouble exposing myself all over the World Wide Web, my weaknesses. But for some reason, I just felt compelled thinking, you know, there's got to be sisters out there who are hurting and need some encouragement, knowing that, you know, I already said I'm a pretty strong sister and I'm pretty weak at this point right now but I'm getting stronger and I just wanted to share scripture verses out there with you that you're not alone. The Lord is there. There are sisters out there praying for you. I pray for those who I don't even know, but I know you guys are out there. And if you pray for everybody else, it's a condolence for yourself. The Lord sees your love for everybody else. And you know, someday we will get a white stone with our name on it. And I want to share that scripture verse with you because It brings me great comfort. So here's that verse in Revelation 2, 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will eat of the hidden manna. I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Now that's pretty awesome. So sisters, press on to that mark, to the high calling of Christ Jesus. And I encourage you to examine yourself. If by chance the Lord has blessed you with people who are biblical and godly and there are issues going on, examine yourself to see if you might play a role in that. 
because the glory of God is at stake. The world is watching the Christians out there. I know God's word says that the love will wax cold, but we need to be very careful that we're not participating in that and that we're pouring ourselves out for one another because we are to love others as we love ourselves, love God, love our neighbor. And this love that seems to be waxing cold, we need to fight for this love and pour this out amongst ourselves. I hope this has been a blessing to somebody out there, to you sisters. Have a joyous evening. God be praised.